So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I started work on the seat in the top. So I had this nice slab of oak and I actually cut it apart for another project and I ended up not using it, which means I wish I would have never cut it apart, but um, it would work for my seat. So it wasn't a flat slab when I cut it and it definitely wasn't a flat slab now that it's in four pieces. So in order to get the pieces not to rock, I just kind of planed down both sides so they were flat enough that this wouldn't rock around on me. And then I rearranged it the way that it was before I cut it and put numbers on all the pieces because I only need to, needed to flatten the sides that were gonna touch each other. So I have my jointing jig and my table saw and I could joint all the edges that will be touching each other and kind of remake this slab. So in order to make the joint uh, more stable, I put a half inch dado groove down all of my sides I'm going to put a thick piece of oak in there as a spline for all of these pieces. Now you can see I'm cheating that uh, dado groove towards the bottom of the piece and that is because I'm going to be carving out a lot of the top of it and I didn't want to cut that groove and, and expose the spline. So that is kind of what the groove looks like and then I just made the spline out of oak I had laying around the shop and um, I could glue this all together. This was just a matter of adding glue to everything and e these pieces ended up aligning really well but they were sliding around a lot so I kind of got two together and then I had to put this in my vise in order to get it uh, to stay still long enough that I could, I could put some clamps on it. But once it was all said and done this was nice and sturdy and having those alignment numbers on there really helped. So then just a series of clamps on all of the pieces, pulled all those joints together, and then I once again had um, an oak slab. Now you could see that there's some, some very great undulations in the top, but like I said, that won't really matter because I'm gonna be carving into it. I believe once it was all said and done, this was a, a little over an inch and a half thick. So next I had to cut out the top, and like I've been saying in the last video, a lot of the dimensions I use for this are based on chairs I was taking off of, uh, taking measurements off of. I believe this ended up being like a 17 inch diameter. So my circle cutting jig is a basic piece of plywood that bolts to the bottom of my router and then it works just like a compass on a central pivot and um, you're going with the radius. So if I went with, I think it was 17 or 18 inches. So I was either um, nine inches off the center or eight and a half. And then I could just go around. I started out with a, a, um, a different bit than what I ended up with. I ended up with a quarter inch straight cutting bit to try and get as deep as possible. But like I said, this was a pretty thick slab so I couldn't get all the way to the bottom in, in parts. So I just cleaned it up with a jigsaw. There's only about an eighth of an inch left. So I was able to go through that pretty quickly. And then I had my circle. So I already had um, the, the X is diagonal marked as my center before I cut this, which was helpful. I could easily find center on this circle. And then I just continually added some other uh, marks. I was gonna use all these marks not only for setting up the rails in the back of the chair, but also for carving. So this section, this half circle I'm drawing is where the rails are gonna be. And I drew it too thick in the beginning, so I changed it. And I think that was an inch and a half off the back and then I can mark center going vertically down the piece and my first back rail will be at where that center line and that back arc meets. And then this line is kind of basically, I don't want anything on the back of the chair to go past that mark. I'm also working off the original drawing here. So I believe I marked seven marks in the beginning but I only ended up using five because the seventh mark would have been too far. So. You'll see me working with seven. I made seven rails, but I only ended up putting five in. So once I had all those marks, I could start carving into the seat. And the seat wasn't going to be intensely carved, but I wanted it to fit um, the bottom 
a little bit nicer than just a flat chair. Most wooden chairs have some sort of detail carving in them. There's usually a recess in the back for your butt to go. And then also you're taking out some material where your thighs meet the chair. Otherwise it feels like the chair's digging into your thighs. So for this, it's hard to see in the video um, the depth and the detail that is in the chair seat. Pretty much through the entire video, it's hard to see what I took off of it, but I will continuously carve into that a little bit as I go. And I just have an abrasive metal, I think it's a medium grit disc in that angle grinder. It removes material really quickly. So then I could start bending um, the back. So same process, I planed down some oak and I made a rough arch. I over bent the back to compensate for about the 10% spring back you'll find um, when you're steam bending. I didn't really do that for the legs and it didn't end up mattering, but for, the, for every other piece after that, I over bent them a little bit because they will bend back slightly after they've been, uh, even after they've been thoroughly dried. So off of that original arc, I made a quick uh, jig that that will be the basis for the bending part of this. Now this jig I made very quickly because unlike the bending strap, which is something I could use in other projects, unless I make this exact same chair again, I won't need this jig. So this was pretty much a throwaway jig. So I kind of made an angle at the top so that the arc that goes on the back can easily slide up over the hump of this jig. And then I had to elevate it off of my tabletop in order to get clamps underneath of it, as well as to be able to get a bending form over it. So this is just two by sixes. You could see there's the one angle off the one side and the back. And then I put some lag screws in the bottom just because there's so much forces when you're bending this wood that you really need very sturdy jigs. And like I said, I eventually, once I was done with this, I took all the pieces apart. I kept the, the, the curved arch because I could reuse that. So the metal strap for the original jig was, I believe, like a $23, $23 piece of metal, which means this is about five and a half inches wide. This would have been a very expensive piece of metal. So I tried, and it did work, but it wasn't the best method. Um, some aluminum, some uh, doubled over aluminum flashing, and then for the jig, I'm using pressure treated lumber. This is decking material. Like I said, it wasn't the best jig, but I only needed to get two bends out of it. So this, the basic process was very similar to the original strap. I have the two pieces in the, in the back going further over, and then the short pieces in the front bolted together, and I added a long lever with clamps on the back side of the form in order to, to get more leverage with bending this, because I wasn't gonna be using the winch. So after I steam bent my piece, this is, like I said, about five inches wide. I could put it in the jig and just pull down on that lever and get this to bend pretty easily. You could see the jig in the back is also clamped because it was starting to move on me. And I had a really large C clamp that once I bent this far enough, I could kind of sit on the lever and, and uh, pull this back into place. The bends on this went pretty well. They also went faster because since it's thinner material that didn't have to steam as much. But I did end up with, I believe, two miss bends on this one as well. And I ended up using one later in the piece that ended up not being that big of a deal. So I took it out the next morning. I dried these the exact same way that I dried the legs, just in a pipe clamp. And these set up for about a week. And this is kind of what the chair looks like. The backer, I went once again with measurements I had. So the backer is going to be about 18 inches off the seat base. And this is also going to be shaped just like in the video with an arc in the back once everything's said and done. So this is the, one of the chairs I was working off of. And I liked these fat kind of oval shaped spindles. So these are pretty much what I'm going to recreate for this chair. This was one of the changes from the original video. Uh, riddle, original photo didn't have any central rails. But I just felt for structure and comfort, it would be important to have them. So this is um, the same oak, and I'm putting center lines down all the pieces. This was kind of a tedious task because I did it on seven pieces, but those center lines be, ended up being invaluable throughout the entire build. And then I was able to chamfer 
both of the edges with a hand plane rather quickly um, so that I was left with a point on one side and then I could flip it and do the same thing on the other side and then I had that nice kind of oval profile I was going for. So like I said I made seven of these and I made them oversized because I wanted plenty of material in case I miscut anything um, I wouldn't have to completely remake these rails. So this is kind of what it looked like at the end and these will all be sanded at the end as well. So I continued working on my seat chair a little bit. You can see I'm still sanding it. It goes, um, there's kind of a, a, a peak in the center and then it splits for where your legs will be. And then like I said, a nice rounded portion on the back. Once I was done, I'm still kind of not done carving, final carving this, but um, after I had that ab abrasive disc, you could see I have a sandy flap disc in there, and that cleans up the oak really nicely. It takes down the material and smooths it out. So the angle for the back I took off of the original chair. I believe you could see I'm finding out right here, it's about a 12 or 14 degree angle was what I found. So I have these scrap pieces of wood around my shop and I cut that angle into them so I can make a jig for drilling the holes in the back of the seat. This is a very simple jig. You can see I just cut my angle and I put a flat piece of plywood on top of there and then I could get that angle I needed for the back. So I test cut it and stuck a dowel in there and tested it with my, my bevel but also on the chair and the angle looked pretty much exact which is very important because if you go to sit in the chair and it's not an angle that you're used to your body will notice it so this is where I had the back around the seat and that those two end holes would just be too wide to line up with the chair backer so that's when I decided to only go with four uh, with five so with that angled jig I could drill all of my holes and these are half inch holes I'm gonna be cutting out pretty much dowels on the end of the rails which will fit into these holes. So with that jig, like I said, pretty simple process. I went fairly far down into the piece but I didn't go all the way through the bottom. So you could see I'm testing the height which I think was about, yeah, it was a little, a little less than an inch and a half. So I did four of these and I got my method perfected and I will show you how I do the last one. So I transfer that exact same angle onto the bottom and then I cut it with a handsaw so that the angle coming off the base of the seat matches up perfectly with the angle on the rail. Once I had that, I could um, mark up my heights, which is about an inch and a quarter, but this also has to be an angled cut. So you can see I'm adding the angle there, going across the back and then adding the same exact angle. and then I could trim into this back portion. I'm going just to about where the tapered part ends. Once I had that, I'm using a half inch dowel as a marker, adding that circle on the top, and then I could hand saw down to the marks on the bottom. Just to make life a little bit easier, I kind of chamfered, not chamfered, I cut little corners and then was able to also trim off the edges around that circle so I didn't have a ton of uh, sanding to do on this piece either. And then you're left with about an inch, inch little down nub that can go into those holes. So these will have to be cleaned up after I cut these with the saw. Um, you can see the base, everything needs to be sanded and cleaned up, but that was the basic measurement. So I used a rasp to remove some of the excess material rather quickly. And it was just a matter of removing a little material, testing it in the piece, removing a little bit more, testing it in the piece, um, kind of back and forth until I got a nice fit. So that was basically what I was looking for. These were all going to be cleaned up a little bit so that they fit a little nicer, but this is pretty much where I left it um, for now. So there's all my pieces. Some are a little bit higher off the base than the others, and I, I, I clean all that up. It was just a matter of fixing up the angles just a little bit. And then those are my, my five back rails in place. 
So then I'm marking 18 inches on the back of all of these because the backrest is only going to go up to 18 inches. And then I could kind of clamp that into place just to get a rough ideal of what everything is going to look like. So these two bent pieces had to be um, glued together. And since I didn't really joint any of these before I steam bent them, I took a hand plane and cleaned up the edge so that they would butt together nicely. This was pretty easy work because this oak just uh, planes really nicely. So once I had that plane down and flat on the table saw, you could see they fit together. So this is just going to be a regular glue joint, but to reinforce it, I wanted to add some dowels in there since this is going to be a structural piece, part of the chair. I don't have to worry about it coming apart with just that butt joint there. So with dowels, I won't have to worry about seams or gaps or anything. Um, so what I did was I put five in here and I marked centers and then I drilled all those holes and these are going to be three H inch uh, dowel holes. So on the one piece I could go through just like here and I could drill all those holes. Now dowels could be a little bit of a pain to align so what I did was after I drilled the first holes I have dowel alignment pins. You could see especially in that last one the bit traveled on me a little bit so the hole was cheated towards the back. So I put those pins in and I could uh, push down on the top and have perfect alignment for those uh, two edge dowels. So I would drill the two edges, move the pins and then drill the next two. So with the two edges drilled, I could put actual dowels in there for alignment, move the pins to the next two holes and drill those. And that is how I align this perfectly. I've done it before where I've drilled all of my holes at once and it never lines up exactly the way that you want. So then once I had all those, I could add some glue, add some dowels, and then uh, clamp this backrest together. This definitely took a lot longer, but I'm was happy to have a nice structural joint on the back side of this piece. And then I could just clamp this together and let it set overnight. Now that it's getting colder, everything has to stay in clamps a lot longer than the summertime. So I, that usually means overnight for me. Um, then I could come in the next day, take it out of clamps. There's sanding that I do throughout this whole process. I don't film a ton of it because it's just hard to tell, especially with sanding that material is being removed. I'll probably show some final sanding at the end. So then to start the backer um, on the chair in the photo, the edges are cut at an angle. So I just added a slight taper to the edges. I rounded over the top a little bit, and then I just used a compass to draw an arc real quickly in the center, and I would jigsaw all of that out. You can see on the edge I have some marks from my, uh, my clamps, which I'll have to deal with later. That is from the steam bending. The clamps actually left an impression in the wood because I didn't use a wooden block. And then after the jigsaw, once again, I did, I did some sanding on this backer just to kind of even it out at first, and, but I didn't really film any of that because I was waiting till the end to final sand this piece mostly. So with all of that in place, once again I could clamp this to the back side of the piece and I have, this is where I have a center mark on the backer and I can line that up perfectly with the center mark on my middle rail. So I knew it was exactly in the center and I'm also lining it up with the 18 inch mark I put on the back. So once I had that center one clamped in place, I could clamp all of the other ones in place and they're kind of splayed out in, in, in even increments. I didn't put any measurements there for that. So once everything was clamped in place, I could put marks. I could put marks where my center lines would be so I know where to drill all of my holes. And then I also put marks on the back because the holes in the back are going to have to be drilled at an angle. So the center angle was easy. That one's uh, perfectly vertical so I could drill that one first. And these are 3 8 inch holes I'm putting in the top because this is much thinner material. This is only about 3 quarters of an inch. So you can see from the marks on the back that these are at a slight angle. So in order to drill those, I just used that wedge that I had again, and I just tilted it up until the drill bit looked about lined up with the hole, and then I drilled those. It was a very simple process. I didn't get too crazy with it. So now those holes are drilled at angles. 
So my two edges, you could see the marks that I originally made line up, which is a good sign. If those two marks were really off, that would have been a very bad sign. So that's, these are kind of in sets of twos and the center one. So with my center one, you could see that is the mark that has to meet on the, the backrest and that is the height of the hole. These once again were about an inch and a half. So since these are three eighths of an inch, this is the exact same process for the ones on the bottom. I drilled um, the center one's easy because it's not at an angle, so I don't have to cut that original angle. But I just transferred that three eighths inch circle on there, some vertical lines, and I could cut out that dowel. Now the ones, I don't think I filmed the other four that are on an angle, and that just means that at the bottom, instead of cutting straight down, um, there are slight angles to all of them. So the, the saw marks that go through the piece are somewhat angled instead of being flat. And then like I said, the exact same process, I could take this out, I'm left with that little nub that becomes my dowel and then I could just clean it up until it fits in that in that headrest. And then it could slide nicely into the bottom, slides into the top. And these, all these holes, like I said, had to be cleaned up a little bit. I didn't do that on camera because it's just a matter of going through and, and filing little bits and pieces here and there until you get a nice, a nice fit. So then I'll do that at all the other ones. You can see the angles are not severe. They're very slight angles. So you just cut that back line at, at an angle. Once I had them all done, I could test fit the whole piece. You could see the edge there get everything aligned up and hammer that backer into place. Now once this was in place there was a little bit of gaps and that was just because my two edge pieces were just about perfect but the middle ones were a little too short. So all I had to do, you could see on the bottom that one's a little too short, was the edges were flush so I just took about an eighth of an inch off of the two edges and then everything fit in there nicely and that is that is the backer so this is going to be the end portion of this video um, there's going to be a, at least one more video because I added a couple more parts to the top of the chair and some more parts to the bottom as well